Hi, I'm Sue. And I'm Mel, and this is Manifesting with Mel and Sue. Today's topic is a really great one. We love this topic. It's reality shifting. So Sue, can you explain reality shifting? Yeah, so, all right. We've talked bef a little bit before about um, the nature of reality, how I understand it to be that there are many possible realities all existing at once. And if you think of every decision that you make in your life switches the direction of your your life, right? So if you decide to go to one college over another college or you pick one um, guy to date, than another guy, it's going to change the direction that your life goes. And it could be in a small way or it could be in a big way, but all of those possibilities are possible realities. And basically because every decision that you make shifts, shifts your reality one way or the other, we're constantly shifting realities. So I'm of the uh, belief that reality is incredibly fluid and that we're mm. constantly shifting. Some of the shifts are, um, really big, but most of them are pretty small. But but generally, we're shifting realities all the time. And when you do it consciously, what you're doing is you are shifting to the reality where you are one way or you have a thing based on you becoming conscious of it. So consciousness literally means awareness. When you are aware of something, when you are aware of the fact that you're a millionaire or you're aware of the fact that you have your dream job or you are aware of the fact that you are the most beautiful woman in the world, then you shift to the reality where that is the case. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I feel like it's a really simple explanation, but I feel like that's all manifesting is. That's all life is, really. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. What are your thoughts on reality shifting? So, I... 100% agree with you. Um, I think that we're not aware of it. And when you're not aware of something, when you're not conscious of it happening, it's easy to miss. Um, and I think when you first taught me about that concept and then it started, it's kind of like when you want to buy a new car. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, now you're aware of that car. You see that car everywhere, even in the exact color you want. If you were like, I want an orange Porsche, she knows that's how, all you're going to see. She knows how many times I've seen white Teslas when yes. I started manifesting my I white started Tesla. seeing white <laughs> Teslas all the time. But it's true. When you become aware of something, then you see it a lot. You'll get a lot of um, evidence, as we call it. Um, so if you become aware of reality shifting, you will start to see things. I have um, actually a really funny story about reality shifting. Um, a couple, probably almost two years ago now, um, I was doing some kind of, I guess it was like spring cleaning. It was in, I think it was in the summer, but I was cleaning like, um, and getting rid of some things. And I had this vase of dried flowers from several of the bouquets that my husband had given me um, when we were first together. And it was, you know, they were old, they were dusty. And I was like, mm, you know, I don't, they're just flowers. I don't really need them. I have the memories, blah, blah, blah. So I took them outside and I dumped them out in the backyard. And um, I put the vase, you know, away to be washed. And um, it was probably, I want to say, Three or four months later, um, I was packing up my house to move and I found that exact vase. And I was like, wait a minute, do, do I have two of these? Because <laughs> it was full exactly the way it was. And I remember I called you like immediately and I was like, I think I shipped reality so I didn't realize it. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, probably. And so um, I asked him about, the vase. And I was like, you, you saw me throw it away. Right. And he's like, yeah, you did. And I was like, then what's this? And he was like, so he didn't really, he didn't understand reality shifting at the time. Right. And it took a little bit of explaining before he. <laughs> so what, what Mel is saying is that when you are shifting a react to another reality, you will, you will find something to be different. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's not like you were intentionally shifting to reality where nope. your vase was filled with flowers. It was a byproduct of you switching to the next closest reality exactly. um, based on something that you were either manifesting or something that changed in your life. Exactly. Um, I, have, I have two really cool stories about mm. um, shifting realities. All right, first one is similar to yours. 
And then the other, well, I have so many stories to do. Um, awesome. So first one is similar. When I was hardcore manifesting like two years ago, um, I had I had bought a second car because all of a sudden I was like, I can have two cars. Um, so I bought a second car for my delivery job. And it didn't have um, Bluetooth in it, so I had to buy an FM receiver that plugged into it, um, into like the, the cigarette lighter. And, and basically the way that it works is that you find an empty radio station um, so that you can use that empty channel to play a song from your phone through it wirelessly. Um, so I've been driving every day um, using my phone on this specific channel, like my car was programmed to that channel. And one day I'm going to work and all of a sudden it's a full blown radio station on that channel. <laughs> it was like, like what? I have to find another channel now. <laughs> and that happened to me more than once actually. Um, so that to me was like, wow, I must have shifted realities because this was not a station yesterday. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember when that happened. I was actually with you one of the times that that happened. It, it happened more than once. <laughs> uh, so another story, um, and this is a, a much bigger shift, um, much bigger evidence, I guess. Mm. Um, when I was married with my husband, um, he came home from work one day oh, yeah. and he had this, um, this sticker, it's a local carpenters union sticker that he got at work. This woman at work gave them to the carpenters there. And, um, they were, um, he was really excited about it. He came home, was showing me the sticker and going on and on about the sticker. And I tried to be patient and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited for your sticker. <laughs> um, like it was a big deal to him. He was excited about it. And he would talk about how um, one of the guys at work had put it on his hard hat. Another one had put it on his lunchbox. Um, so they were kind of like proud of the, these stickers. And um, my, my ex got into a car accident. He fell asleep mm. one day um, driving on the highway and drove into a guardrail that basically sliced his car in half. Oh and the state trooper that came to the scene um, basically said to him that he shouldn't have survived. He walked away with just like a scratch on his watch. Um, so he was really, really lucky. But he came home one day after that and he was freaking out. And um, he's like... I think the guys at work are fucking with me. I don't know what's going on. Oh, by the way, this is this is an explicit. <laughs> so, I'm gonna have to censor we this. We have body mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, but he was freaking out because none of the guys at work had had their stickers anymore. And he's like, "Where's your sticker?" And he didn't understand why they didn't have them. And um, he he thought that they were fucking with him. They're like, "What are you talking about? We don't have any sticker." Like, whatever. And so he went to the woman at work that, that gave everybody the stickers. And he's like, Oh, do you have any more of those stickers? And she's like, she didn't know what he was talking about. Um, so he came home and he was like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. I'm really freaked out. And he's telling me this. And I was like, you shifted realities. Um, so I believe that when you come close to death, that basically if it's not your time yet, your consciousness is going to shift into the next closest reality um, where you survive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened to him. I think that he just shifted into the reality where he survived. And in that reality, they didn't have those stickers. Nope. So, um, and I have a similar experience from when um, I had a near-death experience. As I was going to ask you to share that story. Okay. That was the very first story that you shared with me about reality shifting. Yeah, so crazy. so when I was five, um, we lived in this this town um, in New Hampshire where um, I went. I went to the video store with my mom when I was a kid in in this town, and I remember wanting to rent The Little Mermaid, and I remember looking at the back of the um, VHS box, and it w had Ursula the Sea Witch on the on the back, and I was just. I really wanted to watch that movie and it was like such a clear memory in my mind and for whatever reason we didn't rent it at that time but I remember looking at that box well shortly after that we went swimming in the town pond and um, I was swimming with my sister and her friends and my mom and their mother was sitting on the beach and they were having a conversation my sister and her friends wanted to swim out to a dock that was in the water um, that was far offshore my sister told me I couldn't go because there was a drop-off in, in the water where the water would be over my head and I couldn't swim in water over my head. 
I didn't believe her because I thought that she didn't want her little sister following her. So I went after her and I went down. And uh, one minute I'm face down falling into the water. And then the next thing I remember, I'm face up with my toe just on the ledge of the drop off. And somehow I managed to pull myself up and came up coughing. And my mom didn't even notice because she was engaged in a uh, discussion with her friend. And um, so after that, um, obviously I lived. But uh, I later found out that the Little Mermaid didn't come out until like 1989, 1990, around then. Um, I was five years old um, when I lived in that town and we moved shortly after that. Like there's no way that the Little Mermaid was around in 1985 in this reality. <laughs> so, um, so that to me is evidence that I shifted realities that day where I shifted to the reality where that movie just came out a few years later. That's so funny yeah. that that happened and kind of scary, but, um, well, to me, it's like actually not scary because it makes me feel like I'm safe. Like I'm mm. not, I don't have a fear of death anymore because I'm not going to go what, until it's my time so I don't that's a really great perspective on yeah it. I love that it's it makes me feel a lot safer now like I legitimately feel divinely protected which is one of that's my awesome. affirmations and we all should we yeah. really should so I have a similar story to that um when I was I know I was in my early teens and I was watching um the popular tv series entertainment tonight and I saw um, they had the guest. I don't know if I showed the story on here yet. Yeah, you did. So it was when I had um, seen the guest um, episode that Chuck Norris had hosted of Entertainment Tonight, and they were featuring stuntmen and women. And there was, um, I was in my early teens when it happened, um, and this gentleman that was on there. Um, was doing, they were showing him doing different stunts, falling off buildings and everything. And I, I was like, Oh, he's really cute. I could marry that guy. And, you know, fast forward years later, I met him and it turned out, um, he was my future husband and I did marry him. And when I went back to try to find the, that episode, it actually had aired while I was eight years old. And so I had shifted to a reality where it, like it had aired when I was eight, not 13. Oh, weird. It was very, I was like, I know I was like, I'm like, why would an eight year old say something like that? Right, I was like yeah. 13 years old when it aired. And, but I had somehow shifted into a reality where it happened in 88, not like 93. Huh. Is that crazy? It is. <laughs> I love those stories. Me too. They're so fun. I have another one where I changed somebody's car. <laughs> you changed be... a lot of things. I love the one where. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily reality shifting, but I remember you, you got some random guy to cut his hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, two people. I made two people cut their oh, hair. Oh, that's right. That's true. One was my SP, um, where I decided that he cut his hair, and then, because it was, he had crazy hair, uh, so I decided that he cut his hair, and then I had a dream that he had shorter hair, and then the next time I saw him, his hair was cut. So, like, that's another evidence that your dreams show you the state of your subconscious. Mm hmm your subconscious has been oppressed. And then another one, there was a homeless guy. And I was just like, he should cut his hair. And so I decided he was going to cut his hair. And he did. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> he's a regular homeless guy. I see him often. <laughs> All right. So I think that wraps up Shifting nice. Realities. If you have any questions about how it works or want us to talk about it further, please post in the comments below. Or if you have a story that you'd like to share, we'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Also, like, share, and subscribe, please. And don't forget to go out and manifest that dream life. <laughs>